Here are some of the most ridiculous pastors around the world. Number nine, Kenneth Copeland. Prosperity pastors are some of the most popular TV preachers in the country. They pack their mega churches each week and take in millions every year. They urge their faithful followers to donate generously and in return, the Lord will bring them prosperity. Well, there's no denying some people have prospered handsomely. The pastors themselves. They live like rock stars with huge mansions, private jets, and fancy cars. Their lifestyles are so lavish, some of them have been investigated by the U.S. Senate. One of them is the prosperity preacher Kenneth Copeland, who's been preaching for over 40 years. And after 40 years of preaching to thousands of people who donate to the church, he's able to afford his lifestyle. Copeland lives in a $6 million, 18,000 square foot home on the outskirts of Fort Worth, Texas. The home comes equipped with water views and a boathouse too. And because Copeland is an avid pilot, and he also owns a Cessna Citation jet, it's the fastest private jet money can buy. He said he needed it to better serve the Lord, and he actually proudly did a flyby for his followers after the church bought it. But that's not the only plane used by his church, as there's actually a fleet of planes registered to the church. And you won't catch him waiting in line at the airport, because he's got his own. The Kenneth Copeland Airport is located right next to his mansion. He famously got angry during an interview when an Inside Edition reporter asked him why he needed to fly private instead of commercial and why he needed different private jets. He's actually said before that he didn't want to fly, quote, in a long tube with a bunch of demons. And he also claimed that Tyler Perry was selling his private jet for so cheap he couldn't help but buy it. Number 8. Creflo Dollar Creflo Dollar is the senior pastor and founder of the famous World Changers non-denominational church headquartered in Fulton, Georgia. His ministry was first started at a cafeteria in 1986 with only eight people. In that meeting, Creflo raised $100 from the people that showed up. Fast forward to 2007, and the cash flow received in his church for that year was around $70 million. His congregation had grown to over 30,000 active members by then. His church auditorium, named the World Dome, was built and paid with $18 million in cash. With all that money coming into the church, Dollar doesn't lead a simple lifestyle. He loves his material possessions, and he has the same message to parishioners that God does not want you to be poor. Dollar's church centers around the controversial teachings of prosperity theology. Dollar was also under investigation, just like Kenneth Copeland, for using his church as a tax shelter to fund extravagant lifestyles. The government really needs an audit to figure that out. Dollar owns Rolls Royces, a private jet, and high-end real estate. When he was asked to explain his private jet, he said, quote, In order for me to do what I have been called to do, the airlines, they don't fly my schedule. Number 7. Joel and Victoria Austin. Joel Austin is known for his big smile and positive preaching. And, oh yeah, having a ton of money. Since becoming the head of Houston's Lakewood Church, Austin has grown the church's membership to more than 40,000 people. But it's not his preaching alone that's responsible for his fame. Joel Austin is also a best-selling author and popular motivational speaker together with his wife, Victoria. Austin met his wife at a jewelry store and their first date was at the church where they now both preach. In 2017, his reported net worth was somewhere between 40 to $60 million. As a senior pastor, Austin says he draws no salary from the church, which has an annual budget of $70 million. Instead, he says he fully relies on income from his book sales. The Austins live in a $10.5 million home that has six bedrooms, six bathrooms, three elevators, five fireplaces, a guest house, and a pool house. Of course, he also owns Ferraris and Rolls Royces. Austin is another prosperity preacher who claims that people shouldn't feel guilty for possessing lots of material wealth. Instead, all a person needs to do is thank and praise God for the acquired wealth. Number six, Ed Young. Pastor Ed Young is famous for his quote, God gave me a Ferrari because I am a Ferrari. He said this right after he literally drove up to the pulpit in a Ferrari. Someone gave him a Ferrari, he decided to drive it up onto the church stage, 
He also went viral after he tweeted that he got the Ferrari as a gift. Apparently, Young was using the Ferrari as part of a sermon illustration for his series titled RPM, Relationships, Passion, Marriage. He's also been seen behind the wheel of a Rolls Royce, which also was used as a prop when he went on stage for another sermon. The Rolls Royce was used as a way of telling the congregation that they're a Rolls Royce because they're made in the image of God. Young is trying to relay the message that God has given everyone a Rolls Royce or a Ferrari and that many people aren't driving their cars correctly. According to him, many people are cars that are driving off the road. Doesn't it seem like it's just an excuse for him to drive fancy cars? How do you feel about pastors and exotic cars? Let us know in the comments. Number five, William H. Curtis. Pastor Dr. William H. Curtis is another pastor who's well known for his luxurious taste in cars. Curtis parked his Bentley Bentayga at his church in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, and it caught the attention of a parishioner who accused him of scamming the community. A photo of Curtis's black Bentley was uploaded with the caption, if your pastor is driving a Bentley truck, he's sucking your community dry with hope in tithes. How does owning a Bentley that cost over 200 grand contribute to the community in any way and also to what a pastor preaches is something that many people have asked. The Bentley SUV costs nearly twice as much as the median home in the church's neighborhood of Laramere, one of the poorest neighborhoods in Pittsburgh. Number four, Vyacheslav Baskakov. Russian Orthodox priest Vyacheslav Baskakov has been called out for his Instagram posts flaunting extravagant items from Gucci and Louis Vuitton. Is it actually wrong for a priest to be into fashion? No, but not when it's just for showing off. He posted pics on his Instagram that showed off luxury items such as Gucci slippers and loafers as well as Louis Vuitton handbags and luggage worth thousands of dollars. He deleted the photos after they began to draw attention. I mean, what was he expecting? Isn't posting on Instagram essentially saying, look at me? Church leaders obviously were angry at Baskakov for his poor taste and they disciplinary committee was brought together to quote, bring him back to real life. Baskakov apologized for his photograph saying he would suffer penance and shut down his Instagram account since he's not able to behave humbly and appropriately. He denied owning the items from Gucci and Louis Vuitton saying he had taken most of the photographs in stores. He said that he would sew expensive looking buckles onto his shoes to make them look quote, Festive. The spokesman for the Russian Orthodox Patriarch Kirill said that hopefully this will bring this shepherd to account. But the Kirill himself suffered a similar scandal in 2012 after he was caught in a meeting wearing a watch worth an estimated $30,000. Number three, Alf Lukau. Alf Lukau is an extremely popular pastor in South Africa. He has a big following because according to some of his parishioners, he has the ability to heal any kind of illness. That and he's able to resurrect people while having a lifestyle like a rapper. Lukau is known for his extravagant lifestyle with cars ranging from Bentleys to Rolls Royces. Lukau started his ministry in February of 2002 in Johannesburg, South Africa. Alf Lukau is the general overseer of Alleluia Ministries International and he's supposedly worth a a billion dollars. This is the same guy who preaches to his parishioners to tithe at least 10%, no matter the income level. Before he arrives for church, police officers lead a convoy on a traffic-free road. Thousands of people are lined up on the street waiting to hear Lukau speak. Lukau goes to church in a presidential-style convoy. He'll show up from inside a Rolls-Royce with another 10 cars riding behind. Number two, Joyce Meyer. Joyce Meyer is a TV preacher and president of Joyce Meyer Ministries. She leads an opulent lifestyle filled with fancy homes and expensive cars. Meyer is another person who preaches prosperity gospel. She tells her audience that if they give to her ministry, God will bless them with their own financial rewards. Back in 2003, the St. Louis Dispatch newspaper piece detailed Meyer's luxurious lifestyle. At that time, the ministry pulled in $8 million a month but spent only a tenth of that on charitable works. The rest of the money was used in some interesting ways. The paper found that Meyer's $20 million headquarters has the look and feel of a luxury resort hotel. Local tax officials, in an unsuccessful attempt to get the building on the tax roll, conducted an inventory of the building's contents. The tax assessor's report found that the building contains artwork, furniture, glassware, and equipment worth $5.7 million. This includes a $23,000 Toilet. Since 1999, the ministry has bought five homes for Meyer and her four children. The collective value of the homes is at least $4 million. Meyer and her husband live in a 10,000 square foot Cape Cod style home with a garage that can hold eight 
cars. The ministry pays for upkeep on all of the houses. Meyer called the homes a good investment for the ministry and said that the ministry bears the cost of upkeep and maintenance because the family is too busy to take care of such tasks. Number one, Miriam Mbula and Toby Adaboyega. Does a church that encourages you to take out loans just so you can donate money to them sound like a scam? Yeah, it probably is. Pastors Miriam Mbula and Toby Adaboyega both drive cars that are well over six figures. Toby has a Lamborghini with the personalized plate pastor, while Miriam has a Rolls Royce. They both had allegations from dozens of ex-worshippers who claimed that they were forced to take out bank loans and donate thousands of pounds to fund the church's lavish spending. They tell their church members through video messages that they need to raise hundreds of pounds a week a process known as sowing seed. Former members claim that they've racked up thousands in debt because of the church's demands. They claim that the pastors helped them fill out applications with fake details just so they can get a loan. Apparently, they even went as far as helping members set up a company just so they could get a business bank account with access to an even bigger loan. Here's what's next. 